Welcome back, guys. So in this session, we're going to be setting up our logger utility. So our weapon of choice for this one will be Siri log. That being said, there are quite a few potential tools that are out there. So you have Siri log, you have N log, you have log for net. At least those are three that I have used, and I'm sure that there are others. Now, I am using Siri log because it is touted as the fastest one out there and it is very popular in the developer community but be very objective when choosing your tool i'm going to walk you through the configuration for siri log and configuring the others may have some variations but ultimately they are all geared towards doing the same thing which is logging your application activity now let me explain what I mean by logging application activity. There are times when unexpected events occur. And if it occurs now and you hear about it five minutes later or even the instant after it happens, sometimes it's difficult to track, especially in this context where it's an API. There is no real UI, no real feedback except an error that has occurred. So using this logging utility, we'll be able to kind of make notes as to what action triggered what response that would have turned out to be an error response. And even then we can see the details of said error response. So let's get started with setting up our logging. So we need to get the libraries associated with Siri log. So I'm just going to right click on the project, go to manage new get packages, and then we're going to look in the browse section so these are what we have installed your versions may be different from mine and if you're prompted to update be careful that you should be able to update the microsoft one safely enough but just be careful when doing an update be ready to roll back in case anything breaks so for now we'll browse and we look for siri log dot net core so you'll see this one but that's not the one that we want we want dot net core this one has the libraries dedicated to our project type. So we can go ahead and install that. Once again, if the version is different, it shouldn't be a major problem. And for all the prompts that you're getting, just go ahead and answer in the affirmative. And then once that is done, we're just going to head over to our program.cs and begin our configuration. So what we need to do is let the application know that we're going to be using Siri log instead of the default logger that came with our project because if you look in app settings you see that there is some semblance of a logger um, they are giving you some configurations but then this is not as robust as what we want right so serial log kind of builds on top of that and it allows us to override so i'm going to go down to the ihost builder and the first thing i'm going to do is make a new line under that under line 20 and add dot use and write siri log All right so once i do that it's going to let me know that i need to include a library so use siri log i have to include that using statement but then that's not all as a matter of fact that's that's not even the beginning so now that we have this library here we can now go back and configure. So I'm just doing getting this part out of the way because in the past, admittedly, I've forgotten to put that in. So let's just get that out of the way and proceed to modify our main application, which is going to initialize our logger when the application starts up. And we're just going to put in some test log scenarios right here in the main as our test case. So what I want to do is configure a logger object so i'm going to say log dot logger is equal to a new logger configuration all right so what this is going to allow us to do is set up some defaults and expected behaviors for our logger so i'm just going to be breaking line with each configuration that i add so i'm going to say dot and the first configuration i want is right to then dot again and then you see here they have different options so file and console come out of the box but then they talk about syncs so you can download specific libraries so that you can log to a database you can log to other various files or file types based on how you need it but right now i'm only interested in file later on when we set up our database and so we can double back and add database logging 
to our suite of tools. So right now I'll just say right to file and then this takes some parameters. So I'm going to just name the parameters as I type them because I'm not necessarily going to type them in the specific order that they are required here in the constructors or in the overloads rather, right? So the first one that I'm going to write is path. Path means where should this file get created when it needs to be created, right? And path needs to be a string. So I don't want to set a set path and I'm just going to spend some time and explain here. Once again, context rules. One, you may want to have a central logging path because once you have deployed your API on a server, you don't want to be spelling and guessing where did the log go, where the log might be. You might not want it in the actual project, right? Because I had a log file here that I had just deleted, admittedly, right? But you may not want it in the project because somebody debugging the application may not necessarily, you don't necessarily want them to go into the project files on the server to be able to access the logs. So you can define somewhere on the network, um, you can define on another drive, you can just put in a path here where you know you want your log files to go. So I'm going to say, something like c colon slash slash and i'm going to say hotel so i know exactly which application i'm dealing with when i see the folder hotel listings slash slash logs right that's my path that i'm defining so i'm not saying you must define this path if it's the d drive for you if you don't want to put in the logs that's up to you right but I'm just recommending that you make it easily accessible or accessible enough that you can find it when you need to, all right? So see hotel listings, logs, and then I'm just going to give my log file log dash dot txt. So I'm going to explain that seemingly random dash in a few. So that's my file path so far. Lots of errors, but let's just carry on and see what else. So I'm just breaking line so that we can see everything. All right, so just breaking line and making sure I indent, all right? So that's it for the path. The next configuration I'm going to put in is the output template. How do I want each line to look, right? So I already prepared the output output template i'm just going to paste it there and walk you through it so once again named parameter output template colon and the value i want would be timestamp so i'm telling it put in a timestamp with that level of detail you can add or subtract you may not need all of these so that's year month day then hour minute second minutes millisecond and whatever z is right so I've seen this, I've used this, it's very detailed. It gives you the exact timestamp something happens. You may not need that level of detail, that's up to you. And then the level, what level warning is it? Is it an information warning? I'll go through that later on. Uh, what is the message? And then new line or exception. If there's an exception included, then break line and show the exception, right? So that's basically what that is doing. The next parameter that I have is rolling interval. So that means at what interval should I create a new file? So that brings me back to that random dash that I have there, because what's going to happen here is when I say rolling interval dot day, it means I'm going to have log dash and the date associated with each day. So this is good for segmenting your log file. So if somebody said something happened last week, Thursday, you can easily go and find the log file for Thursday of last week and review it. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with one big file that keeps on growing and growing and growing. And then you're going to have years of logs in one file, which is to me, that's inefficient. At least when you have multiple files, you can manage the older ones. You can delete them safely or move them to an archive safely and still keep that segregation. So that's why I'm setting that rolling interval. But you have different options. You could do it by the day, by the hour, by the minute by the year, it's up to you, all right? The next one would be the restricted minimum level. So I want to restrict to a minimum of 
log event level dot information, right? Meaning I don't need to see every little thing. There are certain debug points like, oh, you know, this is starting, initializing this and revving up that. I don't need to see all of that. So how verbose your logs are depends on how much you log as well as what you set as the minimum. So here I'm saying only log at a minimum of information. I need to include this library, control dot enter, and we include that library. And then I'm missing this semicolon. But before I put on the semicolon, let's just take a look here again, just so we're sure. And I'm missing a comma here. So that's a good, good thing I took a while to review that. And then the final thing here to get rid of all these errors would be to after this file open and close brace, we say dot create logger. So it's going to say logger configuration, all of this, all right, create the logger object now. All right. So now that we have it created, we can actually start using it. So what I'm going to do here is wrap up our start process or our main well, the main line in the main function inside of a try catch. And if you're not so familiar with a try catch, it means it's going to try to do something. And if there's an exception, it will catch it and handle it accordingly. So it's, that's what we call exception handling, right? So what we're going to do is to try and run this line. But before that, I'm going to log to the information or log a bit of information to say, hey, application is starting so we can see exactly what time and all the details required to know that the application started at that point all right if we catch an exception and here i'm just qualifying exception with the objects that actually holds the exception then i'm going to say log fatal so you can log error you can log information you can log warning here it's fatal if the application stops working so i'm saying log dot fatal and i'm saying this is the exception that caused the fatal log to be written and this is a message just to say application fails to fail to start so i'm saying so that when somebody's reviewing the log this is the result of or this is what happened as a result of this exception. The logger will format it how it needs to format it and spit it out into the file according to this. All right, and then after all of that, I'm just going to say finally. Finally means after you've handled, whether you tried the operation and it caught it and everything is done, what do I want to do? Here I'm saying I just want to flush and close my log object. So that's what's going to happen when we start our application. So right now I'm going to go ahead and press this play button up top here, which is going to start up our application and we can go to the log file and see what happens. All right, so now that the application is loaded and just so you can see, the browser will come up with Swagger. We'll go through Swagger later on. Don't worry too much about this. It looks nice, but our focus here is on our log so we see our log here application is starting and we see the log level and it's kind of formatted how we thought it would be right so other things are actually writing to the log see there application started so it log that it was started so this is a starting this one says started right and you can see the exact timestamps for what that's worth right we know the environment. So you see logs provide certain details for us that we can't see when we're just looking at the browser like this. You never know that all of this happened in the background just by looking at this. So that's it for us setting up the logger, at least for now, later on we set up our database and so on, we can come back and add the function that it can log to the database also.